Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Colored Valley Cooks and Real Southern Woman. This is Real Southern Woman, ain't it? Um, it is Tuesday night and uh, tonight is Bible study. Now, tomorrow we may be at church and then Thursday is our family food fight night. And it is a rerun um, this week, but I'll probably be watching it. I don't want to not watch the show. So... Um, it'll probably be Friday before I'm back unless we get back from church early enough that I can do one tomorrow. But today is July the 2nd and our study is about influences. And, and um, of course it's about the Apostle Paul and what he was able to do even when his influences were not the most positive ones. Um, and a lot of y'all know the story of Paul the Apostle, and some of you may not, but he was a guy who persecuted the Jews, um, not Jews, who persecuted the Christians, and he, um, he was a Jew. He was a very educated guy, very, very intelligent. Um, I believe he was, um, I'm trying to think of the name. He was a citizen of the Roman Empire, and so he had rights that a lot of other people didn't have. And so he wasn't just anybody. He was, uh, God chose a really, really important, uh, educated man to do the job that Paul the Apostle did. And Paul, of course, didn't believe in Christ, and he was persecuting Christians because he didn't believe in him, and um, Christ made himself known to Paul. I believe is out on the road to Damascus, and that's a beautiful story in itself in how Paul became a Christian. But um, this Bible study tonight is out of Philippians chapter 1, and that's verse 6. And Philippians is a book in the Bible um, that is in the New Testament. It is one of the books that they do believe that Paul wrote in the New Testament. Um, it is a book about the lady in my women's Bible summed it up as a book about joy. So it does have a lot of joy in it. Um, it's a very short book. You can read it easily within a few, really an hour probably. So, um, but let's talk about our Bible study tonight. It says, he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. And this is Charles Stanley and Jesus, Our Perfect Hope. And this is the day of July 2nd. I've got my little earpiece. All right, it says, You have no idea how God is working through you, even, if you're lim in, even in your limitations. Consider Paul at this time in, in a Roman jail. Certainly anyone in his situation would have felt that his or her life was not effective in that their service had come to an end. Yet during the prison years, Paul wrote the letters that would become such an important part of our New Testament. And that, that makes me think about, you think about somebody like the Apostle Paul, and a lot of people do preach on how um, even in his dire circumstances, he was in jail, he still wrote these epistles. But my I say that if it weren't for him slowing down enough to be in jail, he may have not had time to write the epistles. He may have just been, you know, on his feet, spreading the gospel. So um, everything's planned, whether we want to believe it is or not. And I'm sure God planned for Paul to be in the prison and planned for him to write these epistles for us to be able to use thousands of years later. So I just thought I'd throw that in. It says, do you think Paul knew that these epistles would continue to transform people's lives 2,000 years later? Of course he didn't know that. But you know who did know that? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's who knew it. Yet God had a greater plan than the apostle could have imagined. You may feel limited in your service to God, but there is no way to know how many people that you influence through your obedience to him. Who is watching, listening, learning from you, or how they will be affected, how they will affect the world. 
But always keep in mind every person impacts history in some way, either for God or for the enemy. What you do lives on in the lives of others. So make sure you are seeking the Lord daily and that you are obeying all he calls you to do because the good you do in his name continues to bear fruit in eternity. So what he's letting us know is that we all are influencing somebody. There's somebody we're influencing and it's either going to be of God or it's going to be um, really, you know, let's see, what does he call it? The enemy, which is the devil. And, and so it's up to us which side we choose to be on because, I mean, it does say in the Bible more than once that you can't be lukewarm and be in the middle. You're either for him or you're against him. And everything we do reflects that. Even when we wanna, don't want to be against him, sometimes we are against him because we live in our flesh and not in the spirit and we let our nature uh, we let nature kind of take control of um, that. Now, it says, Jesus, thank you for working through me. And even when I feel limited, amen. And um, he always says his hope is in Jesus. And he gives a reason at the end of every lesson. And then this one, he says, my hope is in Jesus because he brings eternal fruit from my obedience. Okay. So I picked up the book of Philippians, and I started reading a little bit in it. And like I said, it's a really short book. Um, and it is uh, about a church that Paul started in Philippi. And Philippi was a place, um, and it was I think it was one of the first places he actually, I think it was the first place that he was a missionary at that was in Europe. I do believe that's correct. Now, it also talks about that there was a lot of women in Philippians. And so there was a lot of women who had influence on uh, others and even on Paul, I'm sure. And Paul had influence on them. And so it talks about that in here. Um, it also, I was going to read that little bit of excerpt for y'all just so y'all would hear it. And then we're going to go and read a little bit in the book. And that says, women played a, a prominent role or a prominent part in the book of Philippians, perhaps as much more than any other single book in the Bible, I'm sure they mean. The Philippian story began with a woman meeting on the riverside where prayer was customarily made. So it began with a story where women met on the riverside and actually prayed. And um, it says, since Philippi became the first European city in which Paul preached, his first European convert may have been a woman. Lydia of Philippi and her household. Later came a Philippian jailer and his family. Paul's persecution began over his compassion for a young woman, a Philippian girl abused by the occult. And you can read about that in Acts chapter 16, 16 through 9. And I believe that's when he, um, taught, she was uh, possessed by a demon and he felt uh, the need to drive the demon out of her. And I didn't go back and read it, but I'm thinking that's probably what it's talking about. And he got in a lot of trouble because a lot of people were making money on her by it being a show. And then she wasn't able to do that anymore. And so he actually got in trouble. And I can't remember if I think they might have thrown him in jail for that. So anyway, that tells about his um, compassion for her. It says that a decade later, trouble within the church focused on two feuding women and I know I won't say this right, but it's Iodia, Iodia, and Sintachi, Sintachi. And I didn't look up how to pronounce those. I mean, I could do stuff like that for y'all, but I'm not going to. Y'all can look it up if you want to. <laughs> um, I don't want to get too off the off the beaten path here uh, because we don't really know who these women were. But at least um, Paul thought enough of these women to spell them out in here by name. 
Now, these two women had a beef in the church and had gotten into some disagreements. And so, I believe from what I can tell is there was a man, you try to find his name, it's long. Let me flip over, y'all. There's a guy that came to bring Paul the Apostle some gifts from the Church of Philippi. He also, I do believe, came to let him know of the troubles that they were having in the church, okay? So, when he starts out the book, he talks about, um, let me try to find his name. This is one that actually gives quite a few names. Eodius, uh, this it was what comes in my head, but I don't. I'm sorry, y'all. Ephroditus. That sounds much better, don't it? Ephroditus. So, Ephroditus comes from the ch church of Philippi, and he brings Paul some stuff, and he also talks to Paul about uh, the disagreements in the church, and he actually gets really, really sick. He got so sick that he was very close to death, and he does get better, and Paul gets to send him back to the church of Philippi. And so when he writes this letter, he talks about that happening. And he loves these people in this Philippian church. And, and um, he's letting them know what's important and what they need to focus on. But more than anything, he tells them that they should be of one mind and spirit and not be in um, disagreement with each other. But one thing that I took out of it since we talked about our heaven yesterday and where we're going to spend eternity, within this, within this book of the Bible, uh, Paul does talk to us about our citizenship in heaven. So I thought I would um, talk about that tonight. It says, brethren, this is in uh, Philippians chapter 3, and we're going to start with verse 17. It's Philippians chapter 3, verse 17. He says, brethren, join in fellow... Oh, excuse me. It says, brethren, join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. So he's letting them know to follow him as a pattern. It says, for many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. But listen, this is our citizenship. He says, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we all eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the work by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. So he's letting us know that he will take our lowly body and that he will conform it into his glorious body. Now, a lot of people, well, I won't even go there. So some might want to say that that means that we're going to have a glorious body, uh, which we may be, but I think that it's all going to be his body. So even if we do, I don't think we'll individually be beautiful. We'll all just be part of him. Um, according to the work by which he has even to subdue all things to himself. See, it, that kind of tells you what it's about. It says, Therefore, my beloved and long for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord beloved. Um, now, the reason he also says right after he talks about this glorious body, he also talks about the book um, of life, which is a really big deal, y'all. I mean, if you're not saved and you don't really understand what it means to be saved, you can always look up my Bible study on salvation. But it does put us in the book of life, and that does matter one day whether or not we get to spend eternity in heaven. And not everybody will. And there's so many people out there that believe that Jesus Christ is just a saint. You know, he's just a man 
that was just a good teacher, but he was way more than that. He was God. God, he was God sent, and it was God's son. And that's what you have to believe in order to have life and have it more abundantly. And, um, of course, if you pick up the scripture, it's written all in there about he about him being the son of God. But that is what we talked about last night. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. So it's real important that we really get a grasp on who Jesus really is. Okay? Because it says, I employ Iodia and I employ Sintachi, which are the two that were in disagreement to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. So when he, when he writes to this church, he doesn't just slap them on the hand. He lets them know how much they're loved. He lets them know the love of God. He lets them know that they're all the part, a part of the same family, and that is the family of God. We're all working. We should all be striving and working for the same goal, and that is the goal for people to be saved and more people to be in the body of Christ. And he even, you know, he talks about that in this chapter, and he talks about how we are going to be perfected in the body of Christ, and it's all about the body. And so um, I think that's just a really nice message after we talked about last night, uh, our home in heaven. And then he goes on to say here how our heavenly bodies are. And he also goes on to say that we're in the book of life. And all those things matter, y'all. And um, so I encourage you to pick up and read the book of Philippians. It's a really short read. It's a, it's a book full of joy. And really nice things, even if he's, you know, writing to the church to kind of get on to these two little ladies. He's also got so many good nuggets in here for us as Christians to be able to live by. And he also tells you a little bit about himself and how, um, you know, he was brought up to uh, persecute the Christians. And, um, I mean, it's very evident that he learned really quick who Jesus was and he learned that he was real. And he learned, uh, he just fell in love with him really fast. And, um, and I was thinking today, if Christ hadn't have used Paul, um, I'm sure he would have found somebody else because that's how God is. You know, he's going to get his, his work done and he's going to, you know, he, if, if you won't let him use you, he's going to use somebody else. Okay. Hopefully that's the case, uh, that you will let him use you and you will, be an influence. Now, am I perfect? Absolutely not. Y'all know me. I'm not. Um, I'm far from perfect. Um, and that's what really makes us, to me, makes us to be better Christians is to know that we're not perfect. To know that no matter what we do, no matter what we say, no matter where we're at in our life, we will never, ever be perfected. The only way is through Christ and in Christ. And I, do, I, I really have a hard time thinking that there's many people in this world nowadays that truly, truly are only focused on Christ. Um, I mean, I just think that would be really hard to do. With technology like it is and with uh, entertainment like it is, and um, no matter who you are and everywhere you look, the world is out there, okay? And the devil... Um, I don't blame the devil on anything that I do because it's my flesh. It's my fault because I'm the one that's not close enough to the Lord and this Holy Spirit that I fall for the dangers and the uh, snares of the devil. It's not his fault. It's my fault. Okay? So let's not blame the devil. He's got the world set up perfectly so that we can all fall. But it's up to us whether or not we choose the right side, the winning side, right? So we have to get up every day. And just like Paul said, as good as Paul was, he said he had to die daily. So let's not ever forget that. Um, I guess that's really all I'm going to talk about today. We did, uh, we did get our aprons today from Family Food Fight in the mail. Um, we really didn't know for sure if they were going to send us those aprons, but I'm assuming because the first show um, the first two shows, you had to earn a kitchen. 
And then once you earn the kitchen, you got your color on your apron. That was the color of your kitchen. And that's how you knew if we earned our kitchen. And really, they slipped some photos in there. I don't know if y'all noticed or not. But not every photo, people had the white and yellow writing on their apron. And so you could tell, you could have told if you knew the story, um, if somebody had on a colored apron that they made it to their own kitchen. But uh, we got all those in the mail today, and we had quite a few because we got them really dirty, and um, they had to have a few, you know, in stock for us to change into. Although they did make us wear our aprons um, throughout the challenges. And if you'll notice, y'all, when we're standing up there, the next time y'all watch a show, my apron is always so dirty, and nobody else's is. And I'm like, I guess nobody wears them on a daily basis like I do, because I wipe my hands on mine all the time, and mine is dirty in every show. It's crazy. But anyway, I did enjoy Mama's room today, or my room, my prayer room today, and um, I miss her, and I love her, but I know she's in a wonderful place, and I can look at her face and know that she is comforted. She she can comfort me, as a matter of fact, because I'm still in the world, and she's in heaven with God. And so that's exciting to me. Um, I guess that's all I got tonight. And um, if I come on tomorrow, let's see, it would be after church. So it'll be a little later. Or if I'm really tired, then I will see you guys Friday. Okay? Because Thursday night is Family Food Fight at 9 o'clock on ABC, your local station. And if you do not pay for cable... You could probably just switch your TV to antenna and pick it up anyway. It is a local, national, televised program, just like your, you know, your local news. So I hope um, you get to tune in and watch it, and I will see you girls and guys on Friday. And I don't think I've got many. I'm looking to see if I have. I don't think I have many comments tonight. So I just hope y'all have a blessed night in. We will say our prayers, and um, I hope y'all have sweet dreams, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for tonight. We thank you for today and tonight and the privilege that we have here in the United States to share the gospel freely, um, and not even in our own home, but also be able to televise it, I mean, and, and go on social media with it, and we thank you for that privilege. We thank you for your salvation that you have provided through your son, Jesus Christ, and we know that we need him as a savior, Lord, for without him, we are just that lowly body as this scripture is talking about, and we hope to be with you someday in your glorious body, and we know we will. We know we have hope because of your son, Jesus Christ. Be with us as we go throughout our day. Help us remember each other. Help us pray for each other. Help us love on people and spread your love and your gospel. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I hope y'all have a good night. Oh, and you see this little cute little shirt that I got on? You know where I got it? Walmart. Walmart. Bye, y'all.